Rick Hahn was in a good mood, and really, why shouldn't he be? Because he gets to do this as long as he wants. He can build the team, he can unbuild the team, and he can build the team again. And I guess it must be nice to have it to have the results not really matter, right? Man, I think he's just saying this because he's in the AL Central. But even still, it doesn't the the way this is being discussed about how they're compartmentalizing each next thing. Now it's like, well, I, we handle the now now we're we have a chance to do other things for our jobs. For we tried to hire a manager, and that's going to that's going to do this. And then we're going to put a team together, and that's going to do this. And we want to do this, and we expect this. And now that failed, and now we have a trade deadline. So let's look at this as just how the trade deadline went. How'd it go? Fine. I mean, it it did honestly. Okay. Like, yeah, I I mean, it, if you're if you were trying to look at the White Sox without a jaundiced eye, you would be like, oh, it seems like they did okay for themselves at the trade deadline for a team that's not going anywhere and had expiring contracts. They seem to trade away pieces that weren't. I mean, I could make an argument for Giolito, but. Pieces that weren't going to be a part of their future. Sure. Okay. But you could also say you just traded away another first rounder for somebody you hope pans out pitching wise. Mm -hmm. When do you expect that player to come online? Your Adam Eaton trade that was supposed to net you the future of the franchise ended up netting you two players you ultimately traded to the Angels that you got the beneficiary of in a seller's market. You traded a reliever to the Yankees who were not quite sure what their plan is, so that makes sense. You did flip a reliever. But he, he he's another one that could have been in your plans. Could have been in your plans. Absolutely, he could have been. Lance Lynn and Joe Kelly got traded to the Dodgers. Not in your plans, though. But that was the... And bad. But one of those players, you built your window around. Because he's bad. You traded Dane Dunning for him, who still has multiple years of control. <laughs> I'm not arguing against it. You traded Dane Dunning, who still has multiple years of control, by the way. You got and has shown to be valuable in a Rangers system where they're trying to rebuild like the the glory Mets days of that rotation. Right. So here they are. Here are the White Sox. The the season's over. They're but my point is like it's not you have to look at it in a more critical eye sometimes when we had all these trades ballyhooed the way they were. I agree that it's all part of it, it's everything's in context and you and you can't just keep resetting the clock every yes, they every can. time but that's what they, but they can because that's what they do because they're not going anywhere right so they might as well just say well yeah you know here we are so, so you we... two are also resigned to that you no, accepted I, it there's, no, nothing, there's, nothing, I, there's nothing I can do I mean I'll I'll rage against 35th and Shields as long as I am allowed to do it whether it's here or on House of L. I I'm tired of it. But I'm also like worn down by it. it. Of course, like of course the guy that orchestrated this shouldn't have a seat at the table to decide. I I would have fired Rick Hahn weeks ago. I and I would have left it as as much as people make make fun of of Kenny Fine. Someone's got to be in charge of this thing until we figure out who's in charge of it. You're in charge of it. Go ahead and make the trades. And then we start thinking about what happens. I don't want, I don't think that Rick deserves to be the architect of another rebuild. So Rick Hahn was asked, does he take accountability for the failure of this team? Yeah, I already did that several months ago, Chris. What do you mean by that? I was asked that question, I believe, in April or May, and who's accountable? And I said, me, put it on me. I think your paper covered it. We did. I mean, what has changed since then? Nothing. Who is, I, I, a group, I feel that sentiment still holds true. I guess at the time that you said that, uh, I think Sox fans maybe had the feeling that things were going to change. And then you're still in the same spot. That's why I'm asking that. Well, we've traded... I don't know, know how many guys off the big league roster. Things have changed fairly significantly uh, with regards to player personnel. Again, unfortunately, because it didn't play out the way we wanted uh, in terms of uh, other significant organizational changes, those tend not to happen in season. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. I think that that's Chris DeLuca, right? Yeah, the, the I, sports I editor of the Sun. Chris Chris jumped down and went back into his old White Sox beat reporter days to to ask some questions, and 
here's a, this is just a little small piece of advice to me from me. I don't think snide Rick Hahn is a good look. What has changed since then? Nothing. I, I don't think, I'm, I believe your paper covered it, Chris. I don't think that that's a good look. I also don't think maybe, maybe it is like, this is what his personality actually is, or this is him under stress. Either way, I don't think that it's a good look. But when you go back to that cut, like the heart of it of like, well, what's changed? Like the idea of taking accountability, like, why are you, why do you get to be the front man? And I get like, he's right. Or, things like this don't ordinarily change in the middle of a season, unless, unless things have gone so bad from what you were operating with. That everybody's got to go. Now, all the players that you brought in kind of had to go, right? Why are you still here? Why do you get to still sit in that space? Why do you get to evaluate? Yeah, but that's not a trades? question for him. I, and if we knew I who know. was running the team, we could ask the person that question. But again, we, we never he's, know who's in charge of the White Sox. He's the person that I can ask questions to. So I'm going to ask those questions. Like, I mean, yeah, his title didn't change when Tony La Russa was hired. Now, did it? Nope. Although some would say that his power changed. What has Tony changed since then? Nothing. Nothing. But Nothing. his title didn't change. All right. So now what? What's what's the vision? What's the timetable? How good are the socks supposed to be? What should we expect for, say, next year? We still have... Uh, many impactful talents in Chicago. Uh, we still play uh, in a division in which no one has really run away and hid in. Uh, certainly competing for uh, the postseason is viable in 2024. Uh, in all candor, sitting here on, you know, an hour and, or 55 minutes after the trade deadline just ended, uh, proclaiming this is how we're going to get there in 24 isn't exactly uh, our mission. Over the, over the last several weeks, it's been put ourselves in the best position to execute this deadline effectively. We feel like we've, we've done that, you know, quite candidly going back three weeks to the draft, this entire month has been about putting the Chicago White Sox uh, in as good a position as possible as we can going forward. And based upon what we were able to do in this year's draft and now what we've been able to do at the deadline, uh, the organization is much, much stronger for 24 and beyond. Um, precisely what that looks like in terms of the big league level in 24, let's get to the post, the, the end of the season and assess everything, performance of uh, the players who are here at the big league level, what we've gotten out of the minors, what our assets are going forward. And then, as always, I think, uh, you will hear directly about what the plan is for the people in charge. So wait, whoa, whoa. you'll hear directly what the plan is for the people in charge. Or all right, so I, I isolated that part. So let's all listen in. You will hear directly about what the plan is for the people in charge. What you'll hear? I'm still not sure what? if it's from or for. You'll hear directly about what the plan is. Who's in charge? You will hear directly about what the plan is for the people in charge. Who are the people in charge? Maybe it's not him. Maybe he knows that. I mean, I do think he's right in that they added what? valuable prospects to their system that everybody they didn't said, have. But everybody says that after the deadline. Everybody, everybody who sells. But they did. They didn't have a good farm we, system. As far as we know. They didn't as, have a good farm system. As, as far as any of these rankings, I mean, we can look at the rankings. We can hear all these opinions, and but we don't know. But why did they not have a good farm system? They didn't develop anybody. They didn't draft well. Now they, now they say they had a good draft. They always say they have a good draft. It's just, I, but their top was, rated pitching prospect is Noah Schultz. That was a long way of saying we don't know. We don't know when we, so you're going to bring back the core of a terrible baseball team. This team sucks, but you're bringing back the core of the team that sucks and, and saying next year you're going to be good. What? Y yes. Why? And, and then, and then if you're saying we're going to improve the team, we're getting all these assets, we're making all these baseball moves. Okay. When should we expect you to compete? They have. And how many catchers did they get out of this trade deadline, by the way? They need them because they don't have them. <sighs> well, one's going to be out of contract. The other one's just kind of a 4A guy. You needed other catchers, so you went and you got them. 
Yesterday. Do it, they need all of them? Though? They need all of them. Because I would argue you need like two. They need all of them. Well, the entire organization needs catchers. Organizations in general. But I, I could say, you know, was that your best available or were there some position redundancies there as well and I'm, who you traded for? I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe you can get to a point where you can bring in a guy like Jan Gomes, but you're not there. Where I disagree with Dan on this is here's the argument. Okay. I have a guy who finished second in, in American League Cy Young. I have a guy who's going to finish in the top five in American League MVP. Right there are two good building blocks for trying to build a team. You you keep talking about... Right, but the first about, guy you mentioned is worse this year than he was that I, year. They were I don't year care. Removed from that. Well, what, what's the other guy doing? He's playing great. Okay. I have those two guys okay. to start with. I have I have a guy that has 40 home run potential. Right? Who? Eloy. Oh, I thought you meant Vaughn. No. Oh, yeah, God. but, Eli, but he's they've been be, so wrong about Yeah, Vaughn. but Eli, but Eloy's he's not going to be healthy. He never is. Probably. But you're not thinking about this from their way of being able to sell it. Well, you not, have to think like them. That's what they're going to say. But he didn't even really sell it. He didn't go that hard. You, you will find out from the people in charge. You know what he for said? For them or from them. When he said, I said it months ago to Chris LaDuca. DeLuca. It made me, DeLuca, thank you. Uh, it made me think of when he said, it's a privilege to be the general manager of this team. And I thought, are you, are you going somewhere? Like the way he said it had a real finality to it. That would also make me upset. It would make me upset that if at the end of this, he's gone, but he got to be the person that got to evaluate these trades because evaluation, not one of his superpowers. And you can look at that from the way that they've drafted, the way that everyone around that organization talks about Andrew Vaughn, who's a nice player. Like there's there's nothing wrong with Andrew Vaughn, but the way that the White Sox have talked about Andrew Vaughn makes you believe that there's more player there than than what's actually there. When they're just depend, they just depended on him more. They needed to depend on him. And then you start talking about okay, maybe evaluation isn't your strong suit. Well, what about development? In the case of Vaughn, you may have even if if he was you may have screwed up his development to keep him from being the player that he could have been because of what you did in the first year. Hey, what position do you play, Andrew? I play first base. Not anymore. You're going to play right field. Okay. And now you're going to play a little bit of left field. All right. How would you feel about playing second base? I've never done that before. Don't worry. It's really easy to learn that at the major league level. They continue to do stuff like this. So, so for me, it's it's a it's an issue of him still being the person to evaluate it. I can squint and look at the White Sox and say that there's enough there if you do the right things. If you go out and spend money, then you can start talking about having Dylan Cease and Eloy and having Luis Robert and, and those being the, the starting blocks for you to build it. This dude is still talking about future American League Central in present tense. He has no bleeping idea what the Twins, what Detroit, and what Cleveland are going to do in the offseason. Thinking that you can look into the crystal ball of the 2024 American League Central and be like, well, it's still going to be bad. You don't know. You don't. Why? And why would you act that way? Why would you run into it thinking, well, the, the rest of the league is going to be bad? Blow them away. If that's what you think, by what you do and what you choose to do in free agency, but they're never going to do that. It would, it would be a major surprise if they were to do that. It would be Jerry Reinsdorf is old and wants another title, and on. he's going to spend all the money. They trumpeted the, they trumpeted the Benintendi contract like it was some franchise-altering financial commitment. He isn't even a one-win player. He is point 
eight wins. He's not even a guy. And that's your richest contract in free agent history. He is a replacement level player for the biggest deal you signed in history. You could, I mean, you were trying to give away Grandal for all that money. Like, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't get it. And then, and, and then, like, you know, from the people in, for the, the people in charge, the, what? what? Who's? You will hear directly about what the plan is for the people in charge. Who, who are they? I think it's from, I think he is saying from. Who are the people in charge? I think he's saying from. Uh, to add to this, and I know I'm the one who's upset about Jake Berger being traded. The only one in this room. Not the only one in life, because there's a lot of people who are with you on that. I mean, Sully looked at me like I had a point yesterday at Wrigley. Let's go over the first round picks for the White Sox since Tim Anderson in 2013. Please don't. Tim Anderson in 2013. Carlos Rodon in 14. Two wins. Carson Fulmer in 2015. Mm. Zach Collins in 2016, as well as Zach Birdie. Jake Berger. Nick Madrigal. Andrew Vaughn, whose offense was supposed to replace Jose Abreu, even though they were both in the lineup at the same time. Garrett Crochet. Mm. Colson Montgomery just got promoted to double A, as I understand. People are very excited about Colson Montgomery. Noah Schultz and now Jacob Gonzalez. Okay. That's just round one. You just traded away another one of your first rounders. Yep. Yep. That's and how, That's how you build your team. And... And we'll get into this later because it's fascinating. You drafted a player, said he can be all of these things, weren't able to develop him. He goes to another organization and they believe in him so much. They've done a a much better job of developing, developing that player than you did. They believe in that player so much that they made a trade for a third baseman. And said, nah, go play first base. I don't have any gloves. We'll find you one. Because Nick Madrigal's got the hot corner. And I will say that the the conclusion in that story is that your manager refused to use, at the time, two of the best relievers in baseball in a way that was functional. Straight refused. But what happens when, uh, when everybody from that trade is online and healthy? Yeah. Layla, I think you'll feel seen in this tweet from our old buddy Kevin z yesterday. Did you see this? And z he's a zinger, isn't he? Yeah, every once in a while, yeah, you gotta you go sleep on old, old heavy Kevy. He literally tweets like once a year. I know. And they're all like, it's he, he's got he much has, better things to do. I know. He bats a thousand with his shot. Shot his election. He, he just, when he's taking the half court three, he's nailing it. Says condolences to every dad out there in shock and dismay over the trade of an injury prone 27 year old DH who's played fewer than 162 major league games in his entire career. Prayer hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's you. You've become suburban dad. I actually think they got a really good prospect out of the deal. But they also lost 25 home runs and more war this season than Andrew Benintendi. That, hopefully. That's damning with faint praise. Hopefully, Jake, if, if your team's going to be good next year, Jake Berger isn't on it anyway. Or isn't as big of a factor on your team. They didn't want him on this team. But. You're not going to do all the things necessary to make your team good. Or you don't have any evidence that would make your fan base believe that you're going to do what's necessary to make your team good next year. You were on a prove-it deal, and no one over there proved Jack, except for Luis Robert.